I was born in a small farming community in southern Alberta, in Canada. Uh, my immediate family did not attend church, so I did not grow, grow up in a Christian home. It was an invitation to attend a home church. So the years leading up to this invitation, I was seeking, seeking something. And I was definitely searching whatever trendy religion there was at the moment. I think at the moment, I would, at that moment, it was Tibetan Buddhism. And it was moving into other forms of Buddhism. And then I was reading books and going to lectures. And I had moved from Alberta to Vancouver. And I was attending a a music program in, like, attending school in Vancouver. And one of the young women that I was in the program with, she was a Christian. And I was like, oh, that's nice. You're a Christian. That's like, it's kind of like a, oh, good for you. So she kind of, to me, had that, um, I guess to back up a little bit, the way that I grew up, and how my mom spoke of people of faith just made it sound like they were unintelligent, sheep followers, nobody was independent, and all, and they seemed to, according to the belief of my mom, was they really did not consider the value of women. So women were just little people. So this young woman in my course was very bubbly, very perky and seemed quite, you know, innocent. And she's like, I'm a Christian. And the first thing I thought of, oh my goodness, she fits the stereotype that my mom used to speak about. <laughs> and we actually ended up becoming like really good friends in the program. And she was getting married the summer, during our summer break. And I offered to do make makeup for her wedding. She was getting friends to do things for their wedding because they didn't have a lot of money. So one couple was taking pictures and then they had this pastor from their church. And there's a lot of people involved in organizing the wedding. So I just said I would give her the gift of makeup. And I ended up needing a ride to her wedding because it wasn't in Vancouver. It was in the Okanagan in British Columbia. And she said, well, I'll find you a ride. So I ended up getting a ride with another couple and they were the couple doing photography. And we spoke briefly about church and how they knew my friend. And um, at the time, when I look back at it, I was very involved in New Age practices, but I wasn't wholly committed to anything. And uh, you, you turn to like astrology and numerology, and you seek advice from advice columns or everything else in the world. But when it comes to seeking God, well, that's a possibility. <laughs> but there's all this other stuff you can get advice from that's almost an instant gratification. So what they were explaining to me didn't seem fancy. It didn't seem very exciting. And it didn't seem like an instant gratification to answers that I've had for years or what I was trying to, the void I was trying to fill. We got to the wedding. Uh, it was great. It was wonderful. The ceremony was really funny. And the pastor that performed the ceremony uh, ended up, I ended up getting to know he and his wife at the reception that night. And then, then the next day, they offered me a ride back to the city, to Vancouver. So it was several hours back to Vancouver from where we were. And I had no idea who he was, except for this really funny guy that married my friend. And apparently he was a pastor. So we ended up, um, they just ended up letting me talk about community that was missing and the things I was searching for and I just talked and talked and talked and I don't ever remember talking about Jesus or I do remember talking about how I didn't think church worked 
um, had a lot of opinions that were quite misguided. A few days later, oh, well, they dropped me off. It was great. It was nice. I didn't think I'd ever see them again. So a few days later, when the phone rang in the middle of the night, <laughs> I had no idea that this was the beginning of what is me now sitting here sharing my testimony. And that phone call was from the Edmonton police. And I had lived in Edmonton um, a few months earlier. And two years before that, I had reported a bike stolen. And my bike, uh, they phoned at four in the morning and they phoned to say that they had found my stolen bike two years later. And it was the man who was riding my bike was a known drug dealer. And they were really excited because they'd been trying to find a way to arrest him and make it stick. And they're like, he was in possession of stolen property. Would you like to press charges? <laughs> okay, but this couldn't have waited. They're like, no, this is too exciting. And the fact that this was happening, it was kind of a, at the time I was like, this is a sign. This is a sign. Like, this never happens. Nobody's bike gets returned to them after two years. It's, you know, like, this is kind of insignificant, but it was exciting. So my friend phoned, like the friend who got married, she phoned a few hours later and said, you know, I, I want to call because I want to invite you to this home group that we're doing. And... Um, our pastor who drove you home suggested that it might be something you'd be interested in. <laughs> and the first thing I thought of was, well, I think I owe it to God to at least give it a try, considering what just happened in the last few hours. So I started attending a home church that was affiliated with another with the main church. They had broken off in the summer for just Bible study. And I was very skeptical and very cautious. And I, I, I would just sit there and I, I was like, why am I doing this? Why am I still coming every week? I was like, is it just to socialize? Is it just to be? But there was something deeper. There was, I needed to hear something was just the driving motivator to continue going. Like, this was no longer, there was no longer an option to just quit. Something was about to happen, and I needed to, I needed to, to sit and listen. Uh, it, it took a really long time for me to actually sing, worship. Um, reading the Word was, was great. I, I liked it, but I didn't really quite understand it. I have found out later that when you really are open and the Holy Spirit is in you and you are reading the word, it is, it will fill you. The words will come off the page. There'll be moments where you're like, this makes total sense. And it was exactly what I needed. In the beginning, the Bible was just a book. And because of the background I had and the opinions of my family, uh, they were just full of nice stories. But there was nothing truth to it. So I was sitting in the living room for that first few months, developing in what is now my family, still my family to this day. The people that were with me in that small group are still a huge part of my life several years later. Um, but there was a lot of resistance to accepting what I was reading and actually believing that life was going to be better if I totally surrendered to the Lord. There was really just no evidence there was really nothing that stood out at that moment. But I kept going. So when the summer ended, 
and the groups were finishing, it was time for everyone to go back to church. (laughs) And I had just started to warm up to the group and the small size of the group. And the pastor who was leading all of us, who I had gotten to know quite well that summer, I just kind of clung on to the congregation, that particular congregation. It was a small congregation at a larger church. There was three services, so I just went to one and just showed up faithfully every week and not knowing quite what was going to happen. And just being open to possibility. So for a very long time, I used to sit in the back row, just like, I wouldn't say glaring, but definitely watching everybody and just kind of seeing how they were acting. I'd I'd never been in a church and it was a, it was a fairly charismatic evangelical type church. So the first time I saw somebody's hands go up during worship and singing, I was like, um, that's, that's not what's going on. Um, as a musician, I, I couldn't understand how these people were, um, behaving (laughs) like this. Like, why are you putting your hands up? And some people would be running around the congregation or just spontaneously dancing in the aisles. Um, and I couldn't even bring myself to stand up. I was just sitting there, just watching it all happen and not understanding why or what was going on. In in that very early time, it was a, I knew something was about to happen. I knew that it was, you, you just choose this old life that's been going nowhere and constantly Feel like putting stuff in my life, but it just seemed to be emptying out somewhere. So it was just, I would, I would have to say like chasing your tail or just constantly chasing dead end paths. That, that was kind of my first introduction to church and to the fact that we all have our own different path and that it doesn't matter where you are like Jesus has you right where you need to, where you need to be. God has you right where you need to be. Um, and it, it took a very long time. It, it's hard to think back. It's hard to talk about that time because I was in so uh, so much pain, um, so much confusion, and so much had happened to me up until the moment that I chose to start going to church. And then just listening to the word every week and becoming active um, in service every week. Just breaking a chain off every once in a while. Just a a little link gone. So it was the slow, the slow release to freedom 